first part of the install was done. And let us see if it does power up. And now I'm going down to the Ubiquity. We no longer need this cable modem. We can go ahead and remove it. I wanted to show you guys where the fiber does come in on the side of the house. All right guys, we are outside and we are prepping now for our RQ fiber install. The first part of the install was done about a month ago and you can see right there where they put their access point in the neighbor's yard there with that big green cover. I'm glad it's not in my yard. But today they are here prepping for putting the box on the side of the house. And I just wanted to let you guys know if you are expecting nothing to be done to your yard, you are wrong. They will be digging your yard up twice. Once to get the main fiber pulled through your whole neighborhood, and then the second time they come through, they are going to put the fiber to your house. And you can see they're really good at not breaking your cables. You can see TV cables there and other cables. Before they leave, they'll make sure everything works properly. And you can see here with all of these pavers, they could not put a drop on the side of the house right here because they don't do paver stuff. They're gonna be actually doing the drop on this side of the house over here. They have already dug through the yard here. So they have the grass dug up right there. You can see they're gonna go through my garden they're gonna put the drop right here on the side of the house it's gonna go right there right so it's gonna be inside of that little trench right there and they're gonna put it right here they're gonna go straight up through the side of the house right there and then inside of the house they will come to my D mark area where I will assist them in getting fiber run but for now they were actually working on tunneling across the driveway they have their machines out here I think their machine broke and they had to go get a belt put on it but they are going to be running tubing. Ah, they already did it. So they have the hole already bored all the way across the driveway. They go underneath it. And then they go like right here and you can see their pipe right there. And that is their machine that does the burrowing. It goes straight under the driveway. Pretty crazy, guys. That is the first step or the first two steps of getting fiber installed at your house. And this is going to be five gigs compared to what I have at Comcast with two. And it's asymmetric as well. So we're waiting for them to come back and we'll see them in a few minutes. All right guys, so I didn't do a lot of videos during the fiber install process simply because it was nothing exciting, but let me tell you guys what happened. So the fiber guy came this morning and finished the outside and the inside and basically we are left now with this install here. They ran the fiber from the side of the house. They had to go through the yard because of pavers. Long, boring story. They can't take pavers up. So they went through my yard, no problem. They did that. They went up the side of the house and into my attic and they dropped everything right here. There's my fiber patch right there going straight to my modem. Now here is my modem for the fiber. So it is right here for now. I'm gonna rearrange that at some point, but for right now it's right there. And then on top of that, my Eero device is sitting so fresh and fly. Now here's the thing. So I wanna explain to you guys that this is five gig fiber, right? So my maximum speed is going to be five gigs, but let's think about this path. Coming in from the WAN side, so our WAN port, IQ Fiber, it is that green connector right there, it's five gigs. Coming into the modem, the modem then demodulates the signal into whatever, ethernet, okay? Comes out of my ethernet port here, and it is capable of doing. Now, on the LAN side of the Eero back here, which is this black cable, the maximum speed is one gig. You're never going to get more than a gig on the WAN side of this network because of the limitations of this Eero here. Even if the Eero did 2.5 gigs, the big switch only does one. So therefore, if you don't have anything more than one gig right there, then you're not getting more than one gig to the endpoints. Now, what is the advantage of fiber? Asymmetric, so I can upload now at one gig 
And also, we won't saturate the five gig links ever because we just won't. If we ever wanna be as fast as the fiber, we're gonna to have to get some faster networking gear. And that's gonna mean a bigger switch there. Also bigger, if your computers don't have the network cards to support it, you'll need a bigger network card as well. We have five gigs there on the fiber. We have 2.5 out of the fiber to the Eero. We have one out of the Eero to the switch. However, we do have 2.5 from our NAS to our computers for editing. So we do still have that, but we're just not gonna get 2.5 to the internet at all. Why? Even though we have a 2.5 gig switch here, we can't use it because the router needs to be 2.5. I think that the Eero 7 does 2.5G on the LAN side. So I'm gonna go ahead and research that and maybe I'll pick up the Eero 7 for this guy here. Let's go see what they have. All right guys, we are in the Supercar Street Racing living room and actually in the dining room here with the Eero 7 Max. We're gonna get this guy unboxed today. We have a project to get out the Eero 6 and then get our internet upgraded. We're gonna get this over and replace the Eero 6 and try to uplink at 10 gigs on IQ Fiber. Guys, the Eero 7 Max, Eero Max 7, is right in front of me now, and this is an upgrade to the 6, and it has two 10 gig ports and two 2.5 gig ports, as you can see there. Tri-band and wireless up to 4.3 gigabits per second. And let's go ahead and get this unboxed. The Eero 7 Max is sitting right in front of us right now. Having some bad reviews, we're gonna find out if those reviews are accurate. And to get it out, you simply remove the top of the box and they have a nice presentation here with the Eero. And it definitely is larger than the Eero 6. And then inside the box underneath is the power supply and they give you a nice braided LAN cable as well, which is very good. And looking at the actual Eero itself, on the back there is two 2.5 gig ports and two 10 gig ports as well. So it does support 10 gig. We are gonna to try to uplink at 10 gig and then link to our Ubiquiti network at 2.5 gig. Now they have a way to replace a device on your network with another one. So that's what we're gonna be doing in the Eero app. We're gonna replace the six and go ahead and put in the seven when we do that. And this guy is going to go right up here. Powering up the Eero is as simple as plugging in this adapter and plugging in this USB-C port. All right, so I have the new Eero here. I have the modem off, or the ONT is called, off for the internet. And actually we have plenty of room on here now. New power brick in, get it some power. So now we have a flashing white light. We're waiting for that to go blue is the deal. Once we have a blue light, we will go back to where we were. Okay, our light turned blue. Let's get back into the app now. connect our, uh, our gateway. So I am connecting ethernet 10 gig port on fiber. I never did plug that back in. I was supposed to do it at the same time. Okay. I have plugged in 10 gig and now I am powering up the fiber ONT. It says looking for gateway. All right, it did find the gateway. We're gonna hit next. It says it's connecting to the internet. All right, now we have to get connected to our switch. I went from the 2.5 gig port out, and now I'm going down to the Ubiquiti switch in. This should give everything internet. This is uplinked to the one gig switch. Let's go back to the app now. Okay, we did get our software updated. As you can see right here, we're on 7.6.5 now on everything. I did get all the wall plates put back on. Let's go back to the camera. We no longer need this cable modem. We can go ahead and remove it 
Right in front of the Eero 7 Max, everything is hooked up. I just realized we can back feed a couple things with our extra ports on the back of the Eero 7. That means we actually have extra ports to feed 2.5 to other things like the wired Eeros. There's one in the studio that has to be hooked up to the 2.5 gig switch there. There is one in the theater room that can be backhauled from this guy as well. The audio closet down here, which needs a label. So I'm gonna go ahead and label that now. We are taking full advantage of the extra ports here on the back of the Euro. There are two 10 gig and two 2.5. I am back feeding the theater room with that one and I'm back feeding the audio closet with this one. All right, we are out here. I'm trying not to be super loud because my neighbors are all asleep. It's early, but I wanted to show you guys where the fiber does come in on the side of the house. So it comes in right here from in the yard through my garden. They could not go over my pavers. They didn't want to do that. And there is the D-Mark. Fiber goes up, up my house. They could have done a better job of tucking the wire up there. I'll probably do that, but it goes up to the attic right there. The fiber did run through the yard just like that all the way under the driveway to their box, which is located in my neighbor's yard. Okay, we are inside of the living room here. I wanted to recap what we have in here. So basically down here behind the entertainment center right here, you will see the incoming spot for the fiber. It is that plate right there, right there with the green plug on it. That's where the fiber comes into the house. It is patched right there with another fiber cable that then is connected to their modem. And on their modem, you will see on the front, there is power, broadband, service, ethernet, and phone. A phone is not being used. And on the back, all you have is a fiber input, a ethernet jack, a phone jack, and a reset button and where the power goes in right there. It has a small power brick. It does get very warm, so if you have a concern about cooling, make sure you have adequate ventilation wherever you put this. If, for example, if you put it in a closet, it is rather warm and do not stack it with other devices either. I am actually gonna move it down when I redo this whole area and I might get another different entertainment system here, like a shelf, like I have back there, but for now, I wanted to get in here and show you guys the actual equipment and what you can expect from the fiber. I do not use their Wi-Fi equipment. I am using my Eero Wi-Fi 7 there. I'm not using their stuff at all. The installer was amazing. He did a lot of extra things for me and I was really appreciative. He helped me fix a few cables and run a couple of extra Cat6 cables. Love those guys, give them the highest possible rating. All right, I wanted to show you guys this speed test that the S24 Ultra supports Wi-Fi 7 and show you the speeds with IQ Fiber. You can see IQ Fiber down here at the bottom and let's see what it gets. 1,100 down, 1,000 up, awesome. All right guys, I just wanted to take you guys through this a little bit in front of the computer to show you what is going on with IQ Fiber and to end this video about IQ Fiber install. If you had any questions, you can also put them down in the comments section or email me as well. Right in front of me, we've got the iqfiber.com site up, but I want to show you how this is configured in the computer. You can see we are linked at 2.5 gigabits per second. And that means we have a 2.5 gigabit connection all the way through the chain, meaning we have a switch that supports 2.5 gig and our router supports actually 10 gig and 2.5 gig. So that means we have a 2.5 gig connection from the fiber optical network terminal, ONT, not a modem over in the other room all the way to this device. Now let's go over here and run the speed test here. And we are getting 1600 megabits per second, 1700, 1800, 1900. And we are using some internet for streaming as well. We're, we are doing a live stream. We got 2,065 upload speed so far. 
This is, again, this is limited by the 2.5 gig connection. If we had a 10 gig switch and a 10 gig connection, we would probably see 5,000 each way. Let's close that and let you get a good look at IQ Fiber connections, hardwired at 2.5 gig. Guys, go up to the IQ Fiber site if you're in Jacksonville or anywhere that has service now. Go ahead and order IQ Fiber and turn off the other providers if you have them. This is a good, solid deal. It's cheaper, 125 a month. I have five gig up and down. It's asymmetric, don't forget cable is not. Fiber is asymmetric, meaning your speeds will be the same for both upload and download. Fiber is much better than cable at asymmetrics. So guys, thanks for watching Supercar Street Racing. We really appreciate your service to us and we love having you guys as viewers. Please like and subscribe, buy all your items through Amazon through my official links in the bottom of the video description, and we'll see you guys on the next one.